If we're talking merch, you already know Spongebob is on just about any possible thing in existence. That's no surprise when we realize how recognizable he is, and ever since his debut in 1999, Spongebob products have been continuously hitting shelves. What happens when you combine entertainment with a character everyone loves? Money! There's been a really interesting selection of board games featuring everyone's favorite Sponge, and many have fond childhood memories playing. It's time to explore the hidden past and uncover what's been forgotten. Let's take a deep dive underwater to see a comprehensive of history of Spongebob board games, because why not? There's way too many to go over every single example, but I'll be showing you a wide variety. It took a few years for audiences to get familiar with Spongebob, and in 2002, he made a pretty strong splash in the world of tabletop games. Welcome to a wacky race to the Krusty Krab! This box art features the most classic logo you'd be able to find, along with some stock images of Spongebob and Patrick. You'll also notice Squidward and Sandy if you squint, but whatever, the main objective here was pretty simple beat everyone else to the Krusty Krab. The actual board itself would include a nice selection of places throughout Bikini Bottom, and the bubble spaces allow you to move ahead or collect a certain amount of coins. You'd get those coins from this cool chest, which looks like it came straight out of the early Spongebob years. Now as an overall game, this didn't seem like anything too special, but it still managed to get the job done in appealing to its target audience. And because this is one of the very first examples of the franchise heading to the tabletop market, things obviously wouldn't be as amazing as they could be. In 2003, Another original Spongebob game released, Bikini Bottom Beach Party Game, takes on a much different vibe from the Race to Krusty Krab. Its name is probably as generic as you can get, but hey, at least it's being honest. All of our favorite characters are rocking a tropical vibe and some nice art. The Patrick here is just a lazy stock one from those classic days, except this time it's different because he's wearing a hat. Wow, how original, said no one ever. The game pieces on display are a different story though. Who cares about the generic title and art when you have these guys? Anyway. Way. SpongeBob and his friends want to go to a Bikini Bottom Luau party, but there's not enough party gear for everyone. They have to collect what they need to start the party, and whoever gets it all first is the winner. As you'll notice, the board is vibrant and full of life, with seashells that relate to some kind of matching game in the middle. We also see another chest from the series enter our world as a nice little prop, which is just like the previous game. In the grand scheme of SpongeBob history, these two tabletop experiences have gone completely forgotten, and for good reason too. Their concepts weren't very memorable, plus they didn't have any relation to popular board games people already know. However, things changed in 2004 when the iconic Life SpongeBob SquarePants edition was brought to stores. I'm ready! Good morning, Gary. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. If you're into being SpongeBob, then you'll love the game of life in Bikini Bottom. Get a sweet job, adopt a pet, even wear poofy pants. It's all more fun than a net full of jellyfish. For the last time, they're not Krabby Patties. The Game of Life in Bikini Bottom. This is where his success would truly shine, especially when it's the Game of Life, which is a franchise everyone knows. Who doesn't have an amazing memory of living the life? SpongeBob SquarePants Edition. The box art features our two heroes, waving and getting excited for the adventure that awaited them. We could see familiar places like Mr. Krabs' anchor, or the actual city of Bikini Bottom in the background. A colorful path revealed itself in the ground to show that this was no ordinary day. From start to finish, you could tell that actual effort was put in here to really bring SpongeBob to life. Fun very much intended. Throughout the board, we'd see everyone doing normal underwater activities, and they'd be having a blast. I would explain how to play, but it's literally just life. You get a job or start college, and then you head down the long path, going through paydays, buying new houses, all that fun stuff. Whoever makes it to the end with the most money is the winner. Back in the day, I loved playing this all the time, and it really stood out as something unique. People may have also played the PC version of the game, which took everything that made it cool and expanded that. Here you'd be able to play some mini games that wouldn't be found in real life, and it would also do all the complicated stuff for you. But even then, there's something special in playing with the physical board, so that that's what I'm gonna remember most. 2005 gave us Ants in the Square Pants, Spongebob Edition. This was yet another take on a well-known game at the time. The box is, um, interesting, as Ants jump into his pants. I feel like if you posted this online with no context, people would have questions. Oh well, it's the name of the game. And speaking of the game, you really can't get any simpler than this. You have Ants, you have Square Pants, what else do you want me to say? Just choose a certain color, then your friend chooses another color, and you battle to see who can get the Ants 
pants in SpongeBob SquarePants. This was never remembered as much as some other games in the series, but that's probably thanks to how simple it was. Also, anyone over the age of 10 is probably not going to care in any way for this. If you're over 10 and you like this, I'm sorry. But luckily for us, 2005 also revealed the iconic SpongeBob Monopoly. Someone is buying a ball of bikini bottom. Is it Plankton? <laughs> Mr. Krabs? Or is it this kid? It's Monopoly, the SpongeBob edition. You can own your very own piece of bikini bottom. Magic Scrap! Without losing your square pants. I think this was a match made in heaven. They're both franchises that take over everything and have absolutely no signs of ever slowing down. What some people might remember most is its box, of all things. It was a massive close-up of the iconic sponge, but here's the kicker. His eyes actually moved. Oh my god! You could be passing by him on the shelf in Target, but then he'd be watching you. He'll of course never stop smiling, but he will get revenge if you don't buy him. Now because this is once again an incarnation of an existing franchise, there's really not a whole lot to explain with the rules or how everything works. Monopoly is Spongebobified to include various properties from throughout the series that you can own. The silver figures you'll control seem well made too, so at least they tried. The only character who doesn't have their normal design is Gary, who has these radical shoes to walk around to the board. It's canon, so you really can't argue with that. Seems like a fun time, but I can't move on to talking about the next game without mentioning Squidward. Am I the only one that thinks this just looks wrong? I don't know, maybe it's nothing, but I feel like we're not supposed to see Squidward from this angle. Let's move on. 2006 took a bit of an interesting turn for not just Spongebob, but Nickelodeon games in general. Here we have Nick Seen It, which is a perfect blend of DVD trivia and an actual board with actual pieces. This heavily focused on the various animated properties airing on the channel, and you could probably imagine how big of a role Spongebob would play. The main objective would be to progress forward and make it all around this Nicktoons character board to the very end. In order to do that, not only would you roll some dice, but you would have to be very familiar with Nick at the time. There would be more than a few different types of challenges to overcome on the TV, and they'd all connect in one way or another to the classic shows. This is probably the type of game anyone can enjoy, even today, but it's outdated if you didn't actually grow up with any of this. You're going down after you. It has two dice, hundreds of questions, and one DVD Slime Master. It's Nick Seen It, the DVD board game with trivia from all your favorite shows. What gave SpongeBob and Patrick rancid rash? SpongeBob Sunday! Good job! <laughs> Test your knowledge with clips, puzzlers, and questions. What brings you here? What does that say next? Oh, you're cute. Yeah. Kids, time for dinner. Nick's seen it was nothing extraordinary, but to see this evolution in tabletop games that blended real life with digital challenges and minigames, that was awesome! And if we're continuing on with that trend, I might as well mention Nick DVD Bingo. The box features a massive picture of Spongebob, no surprise there. He's also the host throughout the entire game because, let's be real, nobody else could do a better job. Making Spongebob one of the biggest stars here was the best way in making sure this sold copies. Anyway, DVD Bingo may not be anywhere near as fun or complex as seen it, but kids probably still had a fun time playing. Your favorite Nicktoons would show up in a special version of Bingo that needed real life boards, with numbers being announced on the screen. It's interesting to see Spongebob's commentary on every Nicktoons character that appears. I-15! Look, there's Jimmy making a wish on the yellow square! Ow. No Gary, not me. I-15! Moving on to 2006 is The Great Jellyfish Escape Game, which features a very scared Spongebob getting stung, and Patrick closing in for a catch. Everyone's having a race to the Krusty Krab, which feels familiar, but oh well. They have to avoid a giant jellyfish, and whoever makes it to the finished space first is the winner. You can move in pretty much any direction using the die. There's really not a whole lot going on here, which probably explains why you've never heard about it before. It's time once again to relax with the comfort food that is Spongebob games based on already existing franchises. It was so hard to go wrong with these things, which is why everyone remembers Operation Spongebob Edition. Spongebob doesn't look so good. Operation Spongebob! You can help Spongebob feel better by removing his fanatomy yes, parts. Elbow breathing. Operation Spongebob is one of the silliest surgeries ever. All better comes with everything you see here. Looking at the box art, you can tell we've come a long way since those first few board games. Instead of a few pieces of generic art, we are blessed with some completely original works, and they're fun to look at. Squidward and Patrick are in the middle of an operation, that's the name of the game, and Plankton's thinking up something diabolical, as per usual. This is Operation, all right. SpongeBob's in the chum bucket because it works as an evil laboratory, and you're gonna have to take out cartoony objects to win. Considering there's an Operation version of pretty much anything possible, 
popular, it's no surprise to see Nick's ultimate cash cow enter the market. 2008 brought a special edition of Sorry into the world. This was definitely in a brand new era for the Spongebob franchise, which explains why the art has been updated for a more modern generation. Spongebob and Patrick are, um, bumping and jumping from start to home, I guess. The board isn't anything to write home about. While this intersection has a few nice renders and iconic places in the underwater world, the whole thing just feels pretty bland. As the years continued on, it would be much more likely to see Spongebob versions of all types of tabletop games, from Uno to Connect 4. There were almost no original games compared to the massive collection of invading every established board game franchise. I mean, yeah, I can understand why that's the case. It's a lot harder for people to buy original games because they have nothing to base it off of, and they're not sure if it'll actually be fun. But no matter what, the world of tabletop games is growing every single year, and with Spongebob expanding in more ways than one, we can hope for a bright future ahead. And at the end of all this, I have just a simple question. Where's the real life eels and escalators? Escalators! But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos. Give a thumbs up and come up below let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.